You still in bed, Sam? Yep. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. You are going to do those assignments, aren't you? Yes. Like normal at the last second? Absolutely. All right. I might even do them in bed. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Uh, I got to try and find a... Okay. I got to try and find a thing, a, a uh, website, guys. It's not lost. It's in the process of being found. All right. Nope. Guys, I will be there in a second. Promise. Hmm. Where did that thing go? I fall. There we go. Sorry, I was just trying to find something. Everybody doing good? Yes, thank you. Everyone's doing good, 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 good. Elizabeth, you just look happy to be here. Have you gotten the code yet, Elizabeth? Um, I'm supposed to pick it up today. I accidentally ordered the paper I, version. The, the paper version? Yeah, I don't know what happened. That was the only option for me. So I guess no, no, they had no, to- I, I didn't know there was a paper version. Okay. You just fell down one of those little holes that college lend, leads you down into. All right. Vanessa, you're on the phone. Are you driving somewhere, Vanessa, again? Vanessa. No, I'm not. All right, okay. Uh, are you able to see stuff? Vanessa, talk to me. Are you able to see stuff? Yes, I can see everything. All right, all right. Because if you're not in a place where you can see stuff, this is a somewhat of an interactive, uh, interactive lesson. Okay. Bottom line, I have to teach you how to graph by hand, which is a pain. I also am going to teach you how to graph in Excel, which you are going to absolutely love once you, once you uh, learn how to do it because basically it's gonna save you lots and lots of time. Okay, so basically, bottom line, we are, I'm gonna go ahead and show a, a video. Okay, show sound. Uh, block, Jennifer's in here. Okay, has everybody seen the screen with the Oriental woman clapping her hands right now? Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. They were put on hold by time, by careers being built. Everybody hearing it? Claire's bridal weekend at a Verbo beach house. Those emotions too loud also or made the trip. Too Born loud from or not? Friendships that have lasted since Mrs. Noonan's sixth grade. Too English loud class. for me. And here. A buffet of tears, laughs, and the best memories is that better? Is freshly served. Your together awaits. Oh God. Find it with verb. Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to learn how to use Microsoft Excel 2013 in plotting straight line graph out of data table uh, on how to evaluate the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation of the graph. I hope you'll find it educational. On the first column, we have to input the values 
of the x-axis that is the independent variable and on the second column we'll input the values of the y-axis which is the dependent variable in our case here we are going to plot a graph of circumference versus diameter so we'll go ahead and input the diameter values and we have to include the units in meter so whenever you input the values you'll just click on the cell and then you can type the title of the column you can adjust the width of the column by placing the cursor here on the border between two cells and then you can drag the border to the right or to the left to increase or decrease the width we'll title the b column here with the title of the y-axis which is circumference and we'll include the unit between parentheses and again we'll adjust the width here now we'll go ahead and input the values and I'll show you how to control the number of decimal places. You don't have to include it as you type. You can include it later. And now we'll include the values of the y-axis. Okay, so now we have all the data that we need to plot the graph. Uh, let's go ahead and center the values here. And again, that's just for cosmetic reasons to enhance the appearance of the table. So we'll highlight the two columns and then click the center tab. Uh, this will center everything highlighted, including the text. You can also adjust the font, let's say to 12 instead of 11. And you can adjust the text font as well. I will go with Times New Roman. All right. Uh, so now to plot the graph, we'll go ahead and highlight the table. Then we'll click on the insert tab on the top. You'll notice the window on the top will change. We need to go to charts and click on this icon here, which is the scatter graph. When you click on the scatter graph, it will give you several options. We are going to select the first one here. This will give us the graph. Now we have a lot of work to do with that graph. We have to title the two axes. We have to title the graph itself. And we need to fit the points in a nice straight line. So for the title of the graph should consist of the title of the y-axis versus the title of the x-axis. The y-axis here is the circumference. So we can uh, click on the text box here. We'll leave the circumference as it is. We'll write versus and then diameter. Also the title of the graph should include a reference to what the graph represents. In our case here, it represents circumference versus diameter of a circle. So we'll add of a circle to the title of the graph. Okay, now for the X and the Y, we'll go ahead and uh, click on the plus sign here. And when you click on the plus sign, you'll get the chart elements window. We'll go ahead and check the box beside axis titles. When you place the cursor on the axis titles, you'll see actually that a text box will appear beside each of the axes. You can uh, type the title of each axis by clicking on the text box. So for example here for the x-axis we'll click on this text box right, until we get a solid line, solid text box line instead of dotted lines. And we can write the title on the top here. This is the diameter. And the same thing for the y-axis here. We'll click on it and we can write circumference. And don't forget to click enter. Okay, so the two axes are titled now. If you want to change the font here again, you can go to click on the home tab on the top. Uh, if you want to make it 12, you can go ahead and switch it from 10 to 12. Same thing here. Okay, so now we have the points and the titles. In order to make the graph looks better, we can add more grid lines. We can do that by clicking on the plus sign here. The chart elements window will be displayed. And we'll go down to the grid lines. You can see here, small arrow to the right will appear. Uh, click on it and we'll go ahead and check the boxes beside primary minor horizontal and primary minor vertical and just click anywhere. You can see here that our graph looks better with more uh, grid lines. Now the most important part of graphing straight lines is to evaluate the slope and to evaluate the y-intercept of the graph and then to find the equation of the graph. Uh, so now to evaluate the slope, we'll go ahead and click on a cell here under the table. We'll title it slope, click equal. Then we'll go to the cell next to it. So we'll click on the cell next to it. 
and now we'll go up to insert function basically you'll be clicking on this tab insert function we'll click on it and this will display the insert function window now on the insert function window we need to select statistical here under category so make sure you select uh, statistical and then under function we need to look for the slope there are many functions here so to look for the slope just click on any one of them and then click on the s letter sl and this will take you to the slope or you can scroll down simply until you find the slope and so this is the slope here whenever we get the slope under function we'll click ok we'll get this a new window titled the function argument we click here beside known y so make sure the cursor is blinking here beside known y and now we are going to select the y axis value those are the circumference and numerical values make sure not to select a text or a blank cell this is important just select the numerical values here you can see here on the function argument window uh, the cells is from b2 to b8 uh, so the same way we selected here the y values we are going to select the x values uh, so again make sure to click beside non x so the cursor here will be blinking in the box beside non x and again you will select the numerical values that represent the x axis which is the diameter in our case again make sure not to select a blank cell nor a text cell only numerical values okay so now we have the non x and the non y we can click ok and we'll get the value of the slope which came out to be 3.14 which is uh, what we expect since it's the pi value rounded off to two decimal places and then we'll do the same thing with the intercept we'll click on the cell under slope here and we'll type intercept equal and again we'll go to the cell next to it click on it this will enable us to evaluate the intercept value then we'll follow exactly the same procedure we did with the slope we'll go ahead and uh, click on insert function select statistical beside category select intercept under function so again we can click anywhere and then input in in our keyboard this will take us to the intercept function or, or you can uh, scroll down uh, we'll click ok the function argument window will be displayed place the cursor beside non y select the numerical values of the y axis then click beside non x and select the numerical value of the x axis again make sure not to select a text box or a blank cell only the numerical values and then click ok you can see here we got a very small value this is 1.776 times 10 to the negative 15 this is basically zero now to round off all the values all the numerical values to two decimal places we we'll go ahead and highlight all the numerical values here right click when you right click you'll see this window we'll select format cells out of this window the default selection here is number under category also select number and you can see the default number of decimal places is two so we'll leave it as it is two and we'll click ok and this will round off everything to two decimal places if you want to center all the values here i think all of them are centered except the intercept we'll go ahead and click on center and this will center all the values so now we have the slope the y-intercept uh, the last step here is to fit the points in a straight line and evaluate the equation of the graph to do that we'll click on the graph the plus sign here will show up we'll click on it and this will display the sharp elements menu we'll scroll down to trend line and we'll click on the trend line box here this will fit the points in a nice straight line to display the equation of the graph we'll click on the small arrow beside trend line and we'll select more options out of this menu and now we'll get uh, the format trend line window here on the far right the, our graph is linear so this is the default we'll scroll down until we see the display equation on chart option we'll check the box beside that option and this will give us the equation of the graph now for the equation of the graph we can uh, click on it and then uh, drag it here to the center we'll go ahead and replace the y with the actual title of the y-axis which is circumference so we'll go ahead and type circumference we'll do the same thing with the x-axis replace it with its actual title which is diameter this is basically the equation of the graph if you want to increase the font you see the font here is very small to increase it click on the text box that contain the equation of the graph and then click on the home tab on the top then you can go to the font and change it from 9 let's say to 11 and we can 
change the color if you want just to contrast it from the title of the graph and so we'll go ahead and select red for example so we have here the equation of the graph and we can also increase the proximity between the title and the equation so you can drag the title of the graph to the top in for the straight line i don't like dotted straight lines i prefer a solid line here so to change the line to a solid line click on the brush it will give you three options the first one is the dotted line and then the last two are solid lines the middle one has the title typed in uppercase letters we don't need that so we'll select the third option here and you can see the straight line is a solid nice line we are done we have everything we set to do we have the slope of the graph we have the y-intercept we have the equation of the graph and we have the points fit in a nice straight line the axes are titled properly and the title of the graph is correct and so the last step is to print the graph to print the graph we need to make sure we don't use more than one sheet and also we want to make sure to include the table and the graph in one graph paper we'll go ahead and highlight the table and the graph i will click on the page layout on the top here we'll click on orientation and we'll select landscape we can go ahead and click on file in the file menu we'll select print so we'll click on print and when you look at the sheet you have it should include the table the graph and on the bottom here it should display one of one so make sure it displays one of one on the bottom of the print menu here now to type your name on the graph you can either type it on one of the cells but an easy way to do it is to go to page setup in the print menu so click on page setup and now in the page setup menu you'll click on the header footer tab in the page setup menu you'll select custom footer and then you can either type your name on the left section or the right section and make sure to include your section number and then click ok and click ok again and you can see here the name will be displayed on the lower left corner of the page and now you are ready to print your graph thanks for watching Oh, where am I at? Okay. Actually, I, I think that was the best. Let's see, I'm going to get out of here. How do I get out of there? Stop share. Okay. I really think that was the best uh, uh, video. I do have it uploaded. It's in your module as absolute best video. I have another one down below that that gives you a couple, couple other options if you didn't like the way that guy explained it. Uh, any questions on, on that? It is fairly forward. Samantha, did you have a question? Or are you just yawning? I was just yawning. Okay, good enough. You're really, really dark, Samantha. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, one second, I got to share it with you so you can see it. Okay, like he did, he labeled these and then he put in the numbers. And and 25 and 30. Simply, simple speaking, once you get x-axis goes in the left column, y-axis goes in the right column. He goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to go into right here. But you put the two columns into the box, label them or not. I don't really care. I'm more interested in the graph. But what you want to do is you want to just highlight the number boxes. If you put, if you try and highlight it from depth and bubbles per minute, it will not graph for you. So you're going to click on the first box and you're going to kind of like get all the boxes in there. Next step, hit insert. You will get a whole lot of charts. You want the chart. It's called a scatter graph. You want to 
click on that one, the one with the X, Y axis with the dots in it. You click on that, click on the one that is in the upper left. And that will give you a series of points. Are you with me so far, guys? Now, you have three things over here. This is the actual thing that you're really gonna need. This just makes it look pretty. And that just shows you data points and extra fluff that you sometimes may need to use. So right now we're just gonna do the basics, play around with it if you want. You're gonna click on the plus thing. Now it's gonna tell you what elements that you want in here. Every graph needs a title, an axis title, and it needs the label of the units. Nope, we're not gonna do that. So we want axes left in there. We want axis titles and chart line. We're gonna go and hit on trend line and we're gonna hit the arrow. We're gonna go down to more options. Now, you're gonna take this all the way down here and you're gonna hit equation on the line. We need that. R squared, not as important. You can move these boxes anywhere that you'd like. I would move them off of where the line is. I agree with him that I don't want that. Sorry. Ah, grid lines. You may you want to click on primary and primary and uh horizontal and vertical. When I, if I click off of that, that's just that just gives you these main boxes. If you click on this, this will allow you to see the smaller boxes and it's going to allow you to uh, uh, estimate your results that much easier. Questions on how to do this. You're going to want to title it. Titles can be as simple as what the title. Simple as uh, something as the X and Y axis titles. Wrong thing. Okay, so I have everything I need. Title of the grip, title of the graph, the label of the Y axis, label of the X axis. I need to have the equation on the line. All right, now, if, if I'm asked a question, and I know this is gonna be very simple on how to read a graph, but I gotta make sure that you know how to do it. If I get a question, at 15 meters, how many bubbles per minute would you expect? 
If it is on the graph, if it is within the graphing surface, all you got to do is go the x-axis until you see 15 meters, take it up to where it sees the line, and then over. So that at 15 meters, I meet the line, take it over until I see the y-axis, I should have 50 bubbles a minute. On the other hand, and on the other hand, I wish I could, I don't know how to zoom this up. If I have 60 bubbles per minute, all I gotta do is take it over until it meets the line, take it down. And that means I have about, I'm at a depth of about 21 meters. Are we good ladies and gentlemen with this? Am I saying something that you don't know already? Is anybody out there? Hello. Are you understanding what's going on? Did you see the share screen? Yes. Yeah. Right now you're seeing nothing, right? Right now I, yeah, right now I see nothing. Okay. I see my face. Open your eyes. Open your eyes, Jessica, if you see nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Now, the equation of that line was 1.48 y is equal to 1.48 x plus 28.3. That is what the equation of the line is. So if I get asked a question, how many bubbles do you expect to see at 40 meters? It's not on the graph. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use the equation of the line to make that determination. So what we're gonna do, our equation is, y is equal to 1.48x plus 28.3. If my depth is 40, that's off the graph, I can't read it. Plug it into the equation. Depth is the on the x axis, so I put it in for the x, y, is equal to 1.48 times 40 plus 28.3. Y is equal to 1.48 59.2 plus 28.3. Y is equal to 87.5. Similarly, if I get a number of bubbles, If I have, my graph was, went up as high as 80 bubbles.
Okay, if I observe 80 bubbles a minute, the 80 is the Y value. So I plug in 80 is equal to 1.48 X plus 28.3. 80 minus 28.3 equals 51.7. Equal to 1.48x. X is equal to 34.9. So I'm at a depth of 34.9 meters. Are we okay, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, I need to hear, I need to hear some. I need to hear some feedback from you. Yes. So everybody comfortable with doing Excel graph? Or if you're not, are you comfortable with looking at the video again and doing a step-by-step -step rendition? Yeah. Yes. Because absolutely the next experiment you do is going to use graphing. I also have to teach you how to do hand graphing. Hand graphing so you use 70% of the surface. Again, five things that have to be on every graph, even though there are six things listed. Five things that have to be labeled. The title, which is simply the x-axis versus the y-axis. The x-axis needs a label, the y-axis needs a label. The x-axis needs units. The y-axis needs units labeled. And the last thing, you have to have a scale. Like in the Excel graph, let me stop share for a second. Like in my Excel graph, each one of these boxes going up is worth 10 bubbles a minute per box. If I'm going left and right, each one of these boxes is five meters. That's what the scale is. The scale is what you are labeling the big and or small boxes. Keep in mind, you do not have to label each axis, each, each line there. You can label this 10, 20, 30, your choice. Okay, hand graphing. You have to know there's something called the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is the one you control. You are the one that is dictating what you are going to measure at what level. That is what the independent variable is. Now, do you have control over the independent variable? You see, this is where I ask you guys questions and you respond to me. Do you have control of the independent variable? Yes. So are you gonna pick nice, easy to graph numbers? Yes, yes. So basically, if you look at your chart of numbers, the one that has the regularly intervaled numbers, are generally gonna be the ones that were controlled by the experimenter. Independent variables go get graphed on the X axis. The other variables are dependent on what the independent variable is. So they're called dependent variables. They're, to turn, they're put on the Y axis. So if I'm hand graphing, if I want to use the entire, the entire graph grid, I can't start at the origin. I have to start at my lowest value. So if I'm looking, these are my values of my milliliters. If I'd started at the origin, I would waste all the graph paper 
from zero to five because I don't have any points to graph on it. So I'm going to start with my lowest value and I'm going to look to make a nice number that is real close, but below that first value. What would I choose as a value with this set of data? What's my lowest number? Oh, that felt good. 5.1 milliliters. 5.01 milliliters. What's the number that is, would be easy to graph that's below that? Five. So I'm going to start at five. That's going to be my first X point. Now, in order to use the entire grid surface, I got to figure out what range I have to graph. I figure out what range I have to graph by taking my high value and subtracting my low value from it. I subtract the 2505 and the 5.01. This means, this means I have to have a range of at least 20.04 milliliters. If I have 15 boxes, then in order to use that entire range, I'm going to divide the range by the number of boxes I have. I do that number out and I get 1.336. Now the range is in milliliters, so that's milliliters per box. I now know exactly if I want to get the exact range from 5.01 to 25.05, each box is going to be worth 1.336. Is that easy to graph? Is that an easy to mark? Because if the first number, if the first box is five, then the next one has to be 6.336. Then the next one is going to have to be Seven point six seven two. The next one is going to have to be one nine point zero zero eight. Are my points going to be on any of the lines, guys? No. So it's hard to graph. So you want to get something that is a nice, a fairly nice, easy number to graph. Can you suggest one to me? What's a semi, what's a good round number that I can use? Somebody take a guess. Could you use like 1.5? Okay. Let's see if I could. If I have 1.5 milliliters per box and I have 15 boxes, Boxes are going to cancel. This means I can graph a range of 22.5 milliliters. I can graph 22.5. How much do I have to graph? 20.4 milliliters. 20.04. Okay. So I can graph 22.5. And, but I only have to graph 20.04. Can I do it? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. So, another way to do that, if the 22.5 is the range that I can graph, if my lowest value is five, I add the range to it, I get 27.5. That's what I can graph. My high value is 25.05, so yes, it will fit in the box. 
Now, to figure out how many boxes I'm not using, to figure out the 70%, I take the high value of what I can graph minus the high value I have to graph. What this gives me is an amount of milliliters that I'm not going to be using in my graphing paper. I then simply multiply that by my scale of one box for 1.5 milliliters. I'm not using 1.6 boxes out of the 15. So am I using 70% of the graphic surface, guys? I'm using 13.4 out of the 15 boxes. Is that more than 50, more than 70%? Yes. Close so two. I've got a good scale. Let's do the Y axis now. My values to the Y axis start at 5.10013 and they go up to a high value of 26.4031. Again, first thing I have to do is I have to subtract my high value from my low value. This gives me the range that I have to graph. In this instance, I've got 20 boxes that I can use to graph. So I do my subtraction. My range is 21.3018. I divide that by the 20 boxes and each one of my boxes is 1.051 grams per box. Now, can somebody suggest a nice round number? What, well, come on guys, what number is close to 1.06? 1.1. Okay, why, why did you choose one? Why didn't we choose one? One. Okay. If we choose a, a scale of one gram per box, don't I have 20 boxes? So I can graph 20 grams worth. Is that not true, ladies and gentlemen? Let's look at my data. The low number other than the, the number below 5.1 would be five, right? So if I start at five grams, my range is 20. So I can graph up to 25 grams. That would be the highest value that I could graph. Can I do it, ladies and gentlemen? No. No, I can't because my highest value is above. The highest value that I have to graph is above what I can graph. It's not big enough. Can't use it. So when? When you are going from the absolute exact number to a number you want to use to make it easier to graph, you can never go down. If you go down from this number, you will never have enough graph to graph all the points you have. So this number has to be rounded up. Let's choose one and a half. If I have one and a half grams in 20 boxes, I'm capable of graphing up to 30 grams. Okay. 
Let's go with 20. So if I have my scale is 1.5 grams per box and I have 20 boxes, I have the capability of graphing up graphing a range of 30 grams. If I start at five grams plus 30, that equals 35 grams. Can I use that number? Yes. Thank you for answering. Now, if I want to go and find out how much I'm not using, 35 is what I can graph because I'm starting at five and my range is 30. So I can graph up to 35. My highest value is 26.4. I subtract those two. This is 8.6 grams worth of graph that I'm not being able to use. I multiply that by my scale, one box to 1.5 grams. This is 5.8 boxes or about six boxes I'm not using out of 20. That works out to be 29% that I'm not using. So I am using 71% of the graphing surface. Did I satisfy my needs? Yes. The faster you guys answer, the faster we're gonna get out of here today. Now, we have to, if we're doing a hand graph, we have to figure out how to do the slope. Now, if I've got points on my X and Y axis, I have to be able to draw the best line I can through this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to try and average everything out. So I am going to draw what I consider to be my best line through this. The reason I'm doing this is I'm averaging out the errors I got in my data collecting. So that's the whole reason we're graphing. It's to manage out the errors, the individual errors we had in our measurements. Now, slope is the change in the rise, the change in the y-axis versus the change in the run, the change in the x-axis. So it's the change in y over the change in x. If I have two points, one has an X value of 23.6, Y value of 45.75, the other has an X value of 33.5, Y value 55.39. To get the slope, I take the Y values, the 55.39, subtract the 45.75, I divide that by the difference in the X values. If I do this, I get 9.64 divided by 9.9. .9. I do this and I get 0.97 grams per milliliter. Am I going over old stuff, guys? Am I going over old stuff? Yeah, but it's like a refresher. Yeah. All right. Now, there are two ways to get the y-intercept. I need both the slope and the y-intercept in, in order to determine my equation of a line. So all I gotta do is I gotta use one of these points. Just plug into my equation of a line. This is my value for x. This is my value for y. I know the slope now, solve for my y-intercept. So I chose 55.39 and 33.5. I multiply this out and I get 
I do the math out and I get 22 as my y intercept. So my equation for the line is going to be y is equal to my slope times x plus my y intercept value. The other way to do this The other way, that's why it didn't work. I wasn't using right lines. We're going to do this. Okay. If y is equal to 45 point, never mind, doing something else there. There's another way to do slope or y intercept. Basically, what you do is you put y minus the value is equal to the slope times x minus the other, the other point value. If you do that, you will end up with the same numbers. The only reason I mentioned that is I had some people that were doing the slope of a lot of the y intercept this way. And I'm like, no, that's wrong. That's not the way I showed you. It's just another way of mathematically determining the y intercept. You can use this as well if you understand it use it. Don't necessarily go by the way I've done it. If you're familiar with this and it works, continue to use it. And the last thing, this, this uh, slide is mainly what I went over before, say, telling you what happens if the values are off the graph. Then all you got to do is plug the values into, into the equation of the line, and you can determine what the other variable is. All right, now, what do you have to do? Hopefully I'll be able to get back, yes. <sighs> Dear God, how many layers does this thing have? Okay. Stop share. Share screen, now where do I wanna be? Up share. Nope. Back to the same thing. I think I, I lost the screen, guys. No, I got it. Good, 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 good. Okay. I want you to do the first three graphs here. This is the, this is the lab that is in your file. Again, you're gonna do the one that I just did on Excel, only you are going to hand graph this one. Depth in meters versus number of bubbles per minute. I want you to hand graph it. All the parameters I mentioned, you got to have title, independent variable, dependent variable labeled, units for both, and the scale. All of those have to be in there, as well as a best fit line. Use a ruler for the best fit line. 
Another thing I need to emphasize, this is an important part. Do not use your data points. These are your data points. Do not use the data points to calculate your slope because you already have them. There are two reasons. You already have them. If you already have these data points, what's the point in doing the graph? The point of doing the graph is to average out the measurement errors that you have. So that's the other reason why you want to use independent points on the line to use as your points for the slope. If you use data points, I will penalize you drastically. Other two graphs. Basically, you have some questions after it. And basically, the questions I have in the quiz follow these. Pretty much follow these questions. Next level, you have a time after eating and the glucose level. This you can use Excel if you want. I would encourage you to do it. It's a lot easier. So you are going to do this by, by Excel. Again, you're going to have a series of questions after that based upon the graph that you make. Third one you're gonna to have to do is the water depth versus temperature. Those are the three graphs you're doing. Anything beyond this, you do not have to do. There are other series of graphs. You don't have to do days versus leaves. And you don't have to do that last one. Are we understanding what we have to graph, guys? Somebody give me an amen or we'll be here forever. Somebody yes, we know, what, we know what we're graphing. Oh, thank you so much. All right, I'm going to go back into the module. And we're going to pull up the graphing quiz. For the graph of depth versus bubbles, what's the independent variable? What is the? Why did you identify that as the independent one? What is the dependent variable? Why did you identify that as being without? Equation of the line of your depth versus bubbles. Using the graph. You have to see at what depth you're going to determine 50 bubbles a minute. Using the graph, how many bubbles are present at 20 meters? Assume the equation of the you determined from the graph was y is equal to 2.5x plus 14. How many bubbles per minute would you expect to see at 55 meters? Answer in a whole number. Then you're going to have to do the next graph. What's the independent variable? What is the dependent variable? What's the equation of the line? Then it goes through similar questions. Again, use a whole number. Actually, yeah. Five things that a graph needs to have labeled and you're done. Any questions about the graphing quiz? Now I got to see your graphs. So what you are going to do is you are going to go to modules. This is your view. You are going to go to modules. You're going to go to the one that just says graphing. Start assignment. You are going to 
take pictures of your graphs. Make sure they are big enough. You're going to take pictures of the of your graphs, upload them into a file, and then you are going to upload the file. Submit assignment. Just a normal Dropbox, guys. So you have to do the three graphs, upload them into the Dropbox. You have to do the quiz Sunday at midnight. Any questions? Uh, I have one. So we're just turning in the graphs, but not any of the questions. You're not, I'm just, you didn't listen. You were doing both the quiz and the, oh, are you talking about the hard copy questions? Yeah. Uh, no, you don't have to do, I, I, I tried to incorporate those into the graphing quiz. Okay. So look at the graphing quiz that you may be able to use those as a place to write your, your work. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So you, I am not going to grade the hand copies of the questions. I'm just going to use the graphing quiz and the other assignment you turn in. If you notice it adds up to a hundred. Okay. That was my only question. All right. Now, is anybody still seeing the error message from McGraw-Hill for the safety and syllabus quiz? Am I in the wrong lab? Safety and syllabus quiz. Uh, one second. I think I'm in the wrong lab. <laughs> I had like if a quiz for the post lab that I did. You just did a quiz for the post lab today? Oh, uh, yeah. On I did safety? Uh, yeah, but there's also the lab skills and safety assignment with 100 points, and I'm assuming that's the discussion. Don't worry about it. Jesus, how many times do I have to say this? I think I missed the memo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I have, all right, look. Each one, this, this assignment is worth 100 points, right? Mm -hmm. This assignment is worth 100 points. Mm -hmm. Heat of vaporization is worth 100 points. This, they're all worth 100 points. Yet, I've got this one divided into 20 and 80. This one is divided into 90 and 10. This one is 30 and 70. This one is a crazy 20, 28, 26, and 26. Are the numbers, are, are, do I have anything in common other than the final total? Come on, you asked the question. Are these numbers in common other than the final total of these numbers? Come on. Answer the question, please. Yes. Thank you. They are not the same. So what I have to do is I have to create a dummy assignment that gets put in the grade book so that when I do drop an experiment, I'm comparing okay. 100 to 100. I'm not comparing 26 to 70 to 80 to 90. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you have an extra assignment that says 100 points, that means that that is the assignment, and there's nothing there with it. That means that's my dummy assignment that I'm using to put in the grade book. Okay. And I'm sorry if I sound frustrated, but this is about the fifth time I've had to explain that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody uh, else have any other questions? First of all, I, I do need, I need to hear from you guys. Is anybody experiencing any problems with the McGraw Hill going in this week? to do the lab skills and safety. Me, but you already knew that. Elizabeth? Elizabeth, is that you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I, I know what your specific <laughs> problem is. And if you don't get it, tell me, if you don't get it in a reasonable time, call me. Call me, put a message on my answering machine if I'm not there. 
I will get it. Okay, thank you. And I will extend it for you, okay? Thank you. Anybody have any other questions about what we're doing? I have one. I'm here. Can we use like our own graph paper for the graphs or do we have to print out the worksheet you sent us and do it on that? I'd rather you didn't use the one that I had. Okay, cool. Because that one is far too, the, the box, the individual boxes are, are far too big. It okay. doesn't allow you to be real precise with your graph. Okay, thank so, you. So yes, you can use your own graph paper. But again, the caveat is, you have to use 70% of the graphing surface. Okay. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. I am available. My phone number is still 727-202-7275. If you need that, you can email me. Any questions before you go? I do need to take roll, even though it's not really counting. I do need to take it. It makes me feel good, makes me feel like I'm useful. Jordan, I think I saw you here. Yeah, I'm here. Vanessa. I'm here. Jolene. Jolene. She was. I know she was. Danny. Benita. Sarah. Gianna. Leonardo. Jenna. Angus. Taro. Jennifer, I saw you pop in earlier. You still here, Jennifer? Yeah, I'm still here. Parker. Samantha's here. Shari. Nicole. Here. Jessica. Here. Alec. Keanu. Valeria. Uh, I don't know how to spell it to say this name. F N U. F N U. Anybody have a good good pronunciation of that first name? F N U. Okay, we'll go with that. Catherine. New. No. New. No? Okay. Jessica. Elizabeth, you're here. Gabriel or Gabriel. Raylena. Sydney. Emily, Delexis. Okay, guys, again, I don't know whether this necessarily helped you or not. I hope it did. At least, dear God, please learn Excel because it's going to save you so much time in the future. That's it, guys. I will see you on Tuesday where we're starting a new lab the new lab is not McGraw-Hill. So you're gonna have to go through some other types of simulations. I'll be honest, I haven't even seen it yet myself. I'm gonna learn it just along with you. We'll get through this, okay guys? Take care, I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you. See you in a little bit. Thank you. See you in a little bit.